We're live to the planet right now. We're the UK's first septic tank TV channel, and we're live today. So that's right. If you want to um, watch more episodes, then just go to septictank.co.uk. There you'll see Septic Tank TV, and you'll see loads, hundreds and hundreds of episodes of free advice. This is why I do this. The whole reason... I do this TV channel is because I want to help you save money and fix your problems. All right, so let's crack on. So if you're wondering why I'm looking at the other screen here, it's because people are asking me questions. So I'm going to try and answer them, okay? So let's rock and roll here. All right, so we've got Madge. All right, Madge. Right, okay, so what is Madge asking? Madge is asking, okay, what permissions do I need to install a septic tank? Listen, Madge, that's a very, very good question. So it's really simple. All right. So there's a date that uh, depends what permissions and, uh, you know, uh, certifications and stuff like that, applications you need to fill in. So, all right. So let me just start with this date. All right. So just bear with me a second. There we go. There we go. So we got a date. All right, and that date is the 1st of Jan 2015. So can we see that there? Let's just let me move that along a bit there to there. There we go. All right, you can tell this is live anyway, which is good, isn't it? Yeah. So Madge is asking me what permissions does she need? to install a septic tank well it all hinges on this date here all right this date first of jan 2015 because you've got two parts to it right you've got before all right you've got before and you've got after so let me deal with before if you you're moving into a property if you live in a property um if you're considering buying a property that had a septic tank or any type of sewage system installed on the property before the 1st of jan 2015 you do not need do not need Oh, it would help if I could spell, wouldn't it? Yeah. So let me do this, all right? So let me do that down. All right, so let me start again. Okay. You do not need permission. There we go. Can, we, can you see all that? Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. So if, you, if you've got a septic tank um, on your land, if you're buying a property with a septic tank or, or cesspool or cesspit, any type of sewage system, it doesn't matter the size or condition of it, regardless. If that septic tank was installed prior to the 1st of Jan 2015, you do not need permission from anyone. You don't need permission from UK building regs, and you don't need permission from the environmental agency. If you're looking to put a new septic tank in, or install one, and um, it was after the 1st of Jan 2015, then you you need permission. All right, it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? So I'll just say that once more, and then I'll move on, right? So it's crystal clear, Madge, okay? Before the 1st of Jan 2015, if you're looking to replace your septic tank or put a new one in and there was already some kind of sewage system existing prior to 2015, you do not need permission. Oh, great. You can put an entirely new system, uh, an entirely new system in. It can be a different size. It can be a different color. It can be a different shape. It can be located somewhere completely different. It doesn't matter. If there was some kind of sewage system on that land that you're buying or you live in, 
uh, was installed prior to 2015. You do not need permission. And it's on the government website there. We do not want to know because before they came out with these new rules and regulations, they were just inundated with, with in, you know, applications and stuff like that. So they've tried to make it really easy. However, if you're looking to install a new septic tank or soak away and um, uh, the existing septic tank and soak away on there was installed after the 1st of Jan 2015, then you need to go through the normal building application routes and channels. So you need permission. All right. So I hope that's clear, Madge. So um, let's move on to the next question here. The next question is... Um, I'm selling my house. All right, Peter. All right, this is Peter, by the way. Peter, uh, I'm buying a house with, um, no, I'm selling a house. Sorry, I'm selling a house with a septic tank. Uh, what tips or advice can you give me? All right, that's a very good question, Peter. All right, so let me ask this. Let me answer this one. So let me just uh, rub that off. So Peter is selling. A house with a septic tank. All right. So if you're selling a house with a septic tank, or in fact, I'm going to put here as well, buying. All right. So let's put that in brackets. If you're buying a house with a septic tank, or you're selling a house with a septic tank, then what I'm about to tell you is very, very important and it will save you a lot of money. All right. So the thing is this, right? When you come to sell your property, the solicitor representing, if I just put, if I just put some words here, all right, you, you've got the solicitor, so solicitor uh, of people buying house right and he'll want to know certain things he'll want to know the condition of the uh, septic tank he'll want to know stuff like capacity the age uh, the maintenance So he'll want to know a ton of information, um, condition, capacity, age, and main maintenance. He'll want to know when it was last repaired. He'll want to know uh, what materials uh, materials it's made from, and all this kind of stuff and more. He'll want to know a ton of information. Now, at this point, the people selling the house, they've had a septic tank for years. They're used to it. Maybe the people buying your house don't know what a septic tank is um and they're frightened <clears throat> they're a bit circumspect maybe they've had a septic tank before and they and they've had problems with it so these questions that the solicitor and the people looking to buy your house um is normal but however what happens is if you're suddenly asked all these questions right then it throws people into a tizzy they're like, oh, man, OK, no one's ever asked me these questions before. And the only documentation is that they'll rummage around the drawers and places like that and try and find um, septic tank emptying receipts. And they'll hand those to the solicitor and the solicitor will get them and go, right, OK, this will this tells me that you had your septic tank emptied on such and such a date and you've had it done three times now. They got anything else? And people normally say no. So they'll hand that to the people buying a house. And it's just not enough information. And these people will be researching online what's a septic tank, how a septic tank works, dum de dum de dum de dum And eventually, nine times out of ten, what happens is they'll get three people to visit your, your house to look at your septic tank. And those people inevitably will come back to the uh, clients of the solicitor and they'll say, look, you know, you got this 2020 ban coming in, all these new rules and regulations, uh, legislation coming in. Uh, we want to replace your system. And they'll end up getting three quotes for like 10, 15, 20,000 quid. And the solicitor representing the people buying the house will come back to you and say, look, um, we think your septic tank is tired and worn. Uh, we'd like to put a new system in. 
we've had three quotes and it's going to cost anywhere from 10 to 15,000 quid. All right. So if you're happy to reduce the price of your house by that amount, then we're happy to buy it. And this is what happens. And, and people selling the house are like, hold on a second, stuff that I'm not dropping my house price by 15,000 quid to flip in the but then you have to acquiesce in the end because you know this problem is going to keep cropping up if it's not with these people it's going to be with the next ones so people normally have to drop their house price by 10 15 20 25,000 quid right when they get asked these questions but peter in answer to your question what tips can i give you if you're selling a septic a house with a septic tank is you need one of these It's called a government compliance form. And I'm giving them away for free on septictank.co.uk. This government compliance form will literally save you thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds, right? It'll stop them knocking the price of your house down by 15 grand because it's a form. On, on there, you'll notice that there's blanks there, right? And for example, they say the sewage system uh this is what the form says uh that you've got to sign and date at the end and it says the suit system i have installed at my property is a such and such septic tank for argument's sake right uh the sewage where's the sewage system located so you'd write that down in the front garden the back garden um the sewage system has a capacity of x amount of liters um all right so you'd fill that in if you're not sure then just have a look at your septic tank emptying receipts i'll tell you on that the sewage system's constructed out of whatever could be plastic could be fiberglass could be bricks concrete whatever etc etc and so you fill you fill out this form you, you go to septictank.co.uk download as many free copies as you want print them off display one in your utility room one in your uh, kitchen and hand one to your solicitor so then what happens is right when their solicitor comes to buy your property out there, uh, representing the people buying your property says to you all these questions you just hand him this form and he'll get it and he'll look at it and go wow all right then they'll hand that to the people and they'll have like a, a dossier a documented form service history right of what tank you've got how you've cared and cherished it for it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this form, which is free, will save you 15, 20 to 30,000 quid. So that's if you're buying, if you're selling a house with a septic tank, what if you're buying a house with a septic tank? Well, ask to see the government compliance form. If I was buying a house, I'd ask to see the government compliance form of the people selling the house. If they didn't have one, then, and obviously, we'd have to get some people in, two or three quotes, to go and look at the condition of the septic tank in the house that you're buying. And then, accordingly, you'd knock them down for the price of the new system. So there you go. That is how to deal with that on both accounts. So I hope that's answered your question, Peter. So let me just um, do that. All right, so who else have we got asking questions? Timothy. All right, Timothy. Timothy uh, is asking what certification do you need when buying a septic tank? Okay, that's a good question, Timothy. So <clears throat> if you're buying a septic tank, for it to be legal and approved by the UK government, it's going to have two things. First thing it's going to have is a CE mark, which you you see on most things now. If you've been toys that your kids' toys, you buy your headphones, pens, whatever. They've all got yeah, they've all got CE marks on. Yeah, look at that. And um, yeah, and so the tank has to have a CE mark. The second thing that it needs to have is. An EN125, uh, EN12566-1, yeah, certification, certification. It's very hard to talk 
All right, I'm not the best speller at the best of times, right? Don't even know if I spelled that wrong, but the point is, right? An EN12566-1 certification, and what that means is, is that the septic tank is built to a certain specification. For example, it would have a process that goes on inside the tank that separates the liquids <coughs> from the solids. It's made to a certain standard. So, you know, it's made to a certain standard that it's fit for use. All right. And um, so those are the two main things that uh, your septic tank supplier or your septic tank manufacturer should be able to supply and provide you with. Now, um, just at this point, however, just like to point out that there's two types of septic tanks. All right. So there is a, a domestic septic tank, and there is a non-domestic septic tank. All right, so just to differentiate between the two now. So these requirements fit the bill of a domestic septic tank. A domestic septic tank is generally categorized or classed as this. It would be a place where you lived 24 seven with your wife and your kids, all right? That's what they class by a domestic septic tank. And so um, a non-domestic septic tank basically would be a septic tank that would cater for mobile homes, outhouses, stables, workshops, granny annexes, etc. Place where um, uh, holiday lets, stuff like that, right? Caravans, ca uh, you know, things like that. Temporary kind of places where where people work or may stay, but it's on a temporary basis. All right, it may be they may be there twenty four hours a day for a certain period, but they're not there through every day, 365 days a year. And so these rules and regulations only apply to domestic septic tanks, whereas a non-domestic septic tank is has no rules and regulations governing it at all. <clears throat> I mean, um, just, just another uh, point to that, obviously, you know, <laughs> a septic tank shouldn't pollute, be a pollutant of any cause. So obviously you've got to use common sense when choosing which septic tank is suitable for you. But obviously, you know, you've got to be a responsible septic tank installer. And whatever tank you put in shouldn't pollute the environment or endanger people's or, or children's or families' lives or the environment. So... So whilst there's a lot of rules and regulations tied up with domestic septic tanks, there's, it's, there's hardly any rules and regulations governing non-domestic septic tanks. So I hope that's answered your question, Peter. Let's have a look. What else have we got here? All right, so I'm going to ask, answer one last question then. Let's see. Oh, that's an interesting name. Eugene. Okay. All right, Eugene. All right. Eugene's asking me what's best, an onion style septic tank or um, a low profile septic tank? Okay. Very good question. Eugene. So let's put this. So let me start here. So we've got onion. <laughs> it really would help <laughs> if I could spell. All right. All right. All right, so here we go. So we got an onion or an onion. <coughs> oh, that's strange. I know loads of people called Mr. and Mrs. Onion. And I have called them because I'm ignorant, you see. <laughs> and I uh, said, hello, Mrs. Onion. Said, no, I'm Mrs. Onion. So onion, onion, however you want to call it, but an onion, <laughs> onion, right, shape. Uh, style. We're going to call this style. All right, septic tank. 
and you've got a low profile bullet. Septic tank. All right, so I suppose we could put here, right? Watch this. It's going to get very competitive now. Versus. Well, so what are the pros and the cons? All right, Eugene's asking me of each. Well, <clears throat> so let's put the pros here. And let's put the cons there, right? Can you see that on the screen there? Yeah, pros and cons, just about. All right, so the pros of the onion-shaped shape septic tank are is that they're cheaper to buy. So typically, an onion-shaped septic tank, you'll see them, the onion-shaped septic tank, the kind of... Uh, this is what they look like. I'll try my best. Look like that. And the bullet ones look something like that. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. That's pretty. That's pretty much what they look like. So, the onion shaped septic tank, typically, they're made of fiberglass. So, they're light. And they're generally cheaper to buy than the low profile <clears throat> bullet shaped septic tanks. So that, so what else? So the pros of the, well, I'll, I'll start with the pros and the cons of the of the onion one. And that's where it ends, actually. Um, <laughs> they were brilliant in the late 80s and the early 90s, uh, these onion-shaped septic tanks. But the cons are, right, you've got to spend about 700 quid to concrete them in. Uh, Seven, eight hundred quid. Unless you concrete the onion tanks in, the manufacturers don't warranty them. You need a bigger digger. And they take five times longer. All right, so let me explain what I mean by that. All right, so these onion tanks, unless you concrete them in, well, I'll start with digging the hole first, right? The onion tank, as you can see, is, is almost two-thirds bigger, taller, than the bullet-shaped septic tank. And so for that reason, you need a bigger digger, whereas the digger for this would be about 225 quid a week. The digger for that, you're looking at four or 500 quid a week. So suddenly, although it's been cheaper to buy, you suddenly lost that profit because you're having to get a bigger digger in. Once you've dug the hole, which typically takes about a day, you've then got to, <clears throat> oh yeah, another thing I forgot, you've got to anchor it in. You actually need an anchor, not like a ship's anchor, but you've actually got to put straps and a lintel and tie it down because the reason being, if there's any water or moisture in the hole, they just pop up out of the ground, right? So, so oh man, those anchors are about two, three hundred quid. Yeah, so I forgot about that. So you need a bigger dinker. Dinker? You need a bigger digger, right? You need an anchor. Then you've got to concrete them in. You've got to backfill them, and you've got to get either mix it by hand yourself, spend the day mixing the cement and the concrete, or you get a digger in. Costs anywhere from six, seven to nine, six to nine hundred quid to put a big concrete blanket or jacket around these tanks, right? Then you've got to wait a day or two for it to set. And then the outlet pipe on them is about typically a meter below the grass, right? So, and that causes more problems because the deeper down you have to go, depends on the depth of the soakaway and the size of the, of the soakaway. So I'm just being really brief in, in giving you the pros and the cons here. So whilst they're cheaper to buy, in reality, by the time you've put one of these in, they're going to cost you 1500 to two grand more. And if you just spent for 200 quid in the first place, buying a low profile bullet shaped septic tank. So the pros on these are everything really. No concrete. 
you just literally backfill um, on these low profile bullet tanks. All that you use is is 20 to 30 mil shingle or gravel. Um, costs you two, 300 quid, something like that, to backfill with the gravel. Don't need any concrete whatsoever. The hole, you only need a small digger. It takes about 40 minutes to dig the hole to put the tank into the ground. Um, and you can literally do it in a day. The soak away, again, because the pipes on the low profile are shallow, coming about here. So, um, so it's literally starting about half a foot below the grass. You can actually start your soak away. So no concrete. Um, um, one, let's put an, an hour and a half. I, let, me, let me just put this here so i just get rid of that and start that again so no concrete if i put one oh i'll get this right anyway one and a half hours to install um it takes five times quicker um man alive oh man soak away soak away is shallow and, and probably you've been five or six other things but i'm just being quick rather than dragging this out so the, the cons are there is no cons there really is no cons i mean since low profile septic tanks came on the market um I don't know, five years ago something like that they just beat these onion tanks hands down the reason onion tanks are still popular is because people don't know or lots of people don't know that these low profile bullet septic tanks are, are around i just thought of another con when i say a con you know um you know disadvantage these are made from fiberglass right so here's another one made from fiberglass <clears throat> so they puncture and crack very easily whereas these are made from um, hdpe which is like high density polyethylene kind of plastic you can hit it with a sledgehammer they're like bulletproof you know you can drop them from a third story window and they just bounce around so for many 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 reasons right primarily i suppose if you were to sum up the onion tank i suppose if you wanted me to sum up the pros and the cons how much room have i got there I would suppose they are expensive, expensive, and hassle, and and time consuming, right? I used to put these in, consuming, right? So they're expensive to put in, probably, as I said, 1,500, two grand more by the time you put one in than one of these. The time consuming in the sense of take about a week to put in, even longer, seven days. It's a hassle. These you can get in, as I said, in one and a half hours. I mean, it just, so for me personally, it's a no brainer. It makes sense. If you're looking for a septic tank, please do your research and, you know, consider all the options before you think, thinking of saving, oh, I'm saving 200 quid on buying this tank, yippee. But it's, uh, as I said, the um, builders merchants don't tell you that the back end is going to cost you 1500 That choice is going to cost you an additional 1500 two grand if you go that particular route. So there you go. I hope these, um, I hope that's helped you, Eugene. So listen, thank you very much for taking the time to watch my broadcast today. I've got to go now. God, time's getting on. But look, if you want more free advice and information, then just go to Septic Tank uk. you can watch this broadcast again and again and again if you like watching me uh talking about septic tanks but there's loads of other kind of videos on there as well free advice so look if you want free advice and you want to save money and you've got a septic tank then please get yourself one of these first primarily first and foremost right septic tank government compliance one get yourself one they're free i don't want a penny go to septic tank.co.uk click the button that says septic tank ban download many copies as you want put one in your kitchen your utility room uh hand one to your solicitor if you come to sell your house they'll save you thousands and thousands of pounds and make your septic tank compliant before the 1st of Jan 2020. So listen, thanks a lot, as I said, for watching my broadcast. Hope you have uh, a great day. And 
I'll speak to you soon.